Now it turns out that some of Lost Edinburgh isn't so lost after all. The history is still there to see, for now at least, in ghost signs. Now to me these are treasures, works of art, that give a glimpse into the past on the streets of today. But what do you think? What should we do with them? Should we preserve them as they are just now? Should we let them just fade away naturally? Or should we even restore them to their former glory? Let me know what you think in the comments below and join me today on a little tour of Edinburgh and some of these signs that I've found anyway. And it's my little way of preserving a bit of the history of the city. I love these places where they preserve the old signs under decades of paint. I almost feel like it should be a legal requirement to do this. And it also adds a bit of charm and character to the front of the store as well. We'll soon be passing a place where they've left the whole front of the building uncovered. And that looks pretty awesome. By the way, if you're wanting to see all these lovely signs without my ugly mug in shot, just hang about till the end and I'll post all the proper photos there. If you've grown up in Edinburgh and are of a certain age, I'm sure you'll remember Mr. Bonnie's ice cream. Now it's really nice to see that this old sign has survived a few recent paint jobs. And I'm also pleased to be told at last that ice cream's good for me. Who knew? By the way folks, you'll see just over there behind me, this is the one I was talking about just before, where the whole front of the building's been left uncovered. Pretty cool, eh? We're just in between Greyfriars Bobby and the Meadows at this stage. And another one not too much further along the road, but this one just looks like it's been sanded. I don't see any old ghost signs here. Oh boy, I've just cut across to Nicholson Square and my prayers have been answered in a big way. Look at this. I think Edinburgh looks amazing, especially the old buildings with these signs. And just imagine what that would have been like when they were everywhere. This one's an old basket maker. Back in the days when making baskets was a big enough deal to have an extravagant sign like that. Love it. Hey Bobby. Now I've brought you back to Greyfriars Kirkyard, which you might remember from my last video. But today, of course, we're looking for signs and we get a beautiful view of one here. Harvey's Furniture. Nothing fills me with more dread than going into a furniture store, but at least their sign's nice and compare it to the one that they've got now. Now I'm just in a doorway on George IV Bridge, just behind the Elephant House. I must have walked past here a thousand times and I've never noticed this before. But I love all the old gold writing and there's evidence of another sign behind that one. What even is the Ancient Order of Foresters? Whatever they are, they had a really good sign making department. Let's move on. Here's another one on George IV Bridge. I'm not even sure if you can see it, but it says Bert Edgar Seed Merchants. That's one I'm sure the pigeons would have loved hanging about back in the day, but now it's almost gone forever. Now look at this one on the famous Victoria Street. Now there's a lot of construction work here at the moment obviously, so this might have been covered before. I've certainly never seen it before, or I might just have been walking right past it. Exploring the wee courses of Edinburgh's High Street, or Royal Mile as it's known, is fun in itself. But you'll also find a ghostly reminder of the past in almost every one. These ones tend to be a bit more faded, but it's still fascinating trying to work out what used to be down these wee tunnels in old Edinburgh. Some of these courses get a bit tight for a big guy like me. There's quite a few of these ones about. Two things we obviously sold a lot of in Edinburgh back in the day. If you've just got off your train at Waverley Station and you fancy a wee sneaky pint, 
There's a few places I'd recommend more than the halfway house here on Flesh Market Close. But if you look up above the pub, you'll see a reminder of the old suburban luncheon bar. The sign certainly lasted longer than its luncheons, but this is somewhere I couldn't find anything about online. Do any of you know about it? Have you even been there in the past? Oh, that must be the tribute to Prince Philip. It's a 41 gun salute, so there'll be one of those every minute from 12 o'clock. We're now down at Easter Road, home of the famous High Bees. And I'm looking for a sign that I've seen online, but I don't know if it's still there. There's a lot of kind of new build houses around here, so it might be gone. Yes! I'm very happy to report that it is indeed still here, James Dunbar. Man, I'm so thirsty now. Partly because it took me so long to get here. And partly because this used to be a lemonade factory. I'll stick to water for just now. We're down a little lane now, just beside one of Edinburgh's old Victorian swimming pools. And over here, on the other side of the road, we've got the old fire station. If we just have a wee look round the corner... There we go. Fire engine house, 1877. And what have we got here? A ghost sign. Firemaster first door. I guess there used to be a hand just pointing around the corner. It's a shame because that looks like it's going to be gone soon. Anyway, on to the next one. Could someone tell me what a harmonium is? Sounds musical. I'm not even sure if that's an old sign. Anyway. Stockbridge will be our next destination. I've just realised it's about 40 minutes walk. I should have planned this a bit better. Or maybe taking the bus. So while I make this long walk to the next sign, look, almost 24,000 steps today so far. Hey, I can give you a little channel update. Not that much has changed. The only thing is I'm back to work full time now. And while that's still a bit of a shock to the system, it won't actually change my content too much. It just means I'll have to film at weekends. But also from the 26th of April here in Scotland, We'll be able to travel across the rest of Scotland again, so we've got some plans for trips up north. So here we are down at Stockbridge, and this is what we've come for, this Polar Isis sign behind me. Uh, this is quite a famous sign in these parts, but at the same time, I've not been able to find out much about it online. Now, I think Polar Ices had a fleet of ice cream vans in Edinburgh. Maybe this is where the, they parked them up at night in the garage, I'm not sure. I might have brain freeze and have that completely wrong. So, if you know what this one's all about, be sure to let me know in the comments. I really like this one, though. Can you hear how bad my voice is today? That's after just two beers last night. Just as well, we're moving on to the last location. So there we are folks, in my opinion we've saved the best and probably the smallest until last. Look at this one, I really love it. It took a while to track down as well. We're just off the Dean Bridge as you're coming into Edinburgh, anyway. Um, so Telegraph I think, and quite appropriately it's still on the side of a news agent, but it's like it's hiding behind the brick here and I'm tempted just to peel off some more and find out what's under there. I won't of course, but 
there we go. I really like that one. A nice one to finish. So that's the end of today's tour guys, thank you. If you can, just stay tuned for a few minutes more, have a wee look at the photos as well. I'm sure I've missed something really obvious today, but if I have, I'm too tired to care. I've done 30,000 steps, that's enough. I'll see you again soon, bye bye. Imagine the guy was in there having a barbecue or something today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.